Well, definitely not gonna be imaging tonight. Let's go inside and talk about camera lenses. Hi, I'm Walt Busby, and this is Delta Astrophotography. So you're wanting a camera lens or a telescope to photograph the night sky. So let's talk about it. What you choose is gonna depend on a few things. What type of camera you have, whether it's full frame or crop sensor or micro four thirds. Also, whether or not you have a star tracker. And finally, what style you wanna shoot, whether it's landscape or deep sky. I'm gonna be breaking down all three of those and then making some recommendations for you. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the star tracker. A star tracker like this, the iOptron Skyguider Pro, will move your camera with the rotation of the Earth, freezing the stars so you can do long exposures. And this pretty much makes all of your lenses very powerful, whether it's an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens or a, a big 600 millimeter uh, zoom lens. They will all work great. Now that we've got the star tracker out of the way, let's talk about camera type. There are two main types of cameras you'll see out there. There's full frame cameras and there's crop sensor cameras. Now, a, a lot of astrophotography videos touch up on, on this, but they don't make a big deal out of it. So today, I'm gonna make a very big deal out of it. So you may or may not know this, but on a crop sensor camera, the image is a little more zoomed in than on a full frame camera. And if you paid under $1,000 American for your camera, you probably have a crop sensor camera. So what does this mean? Let's take this 14 millimeter lens. On a full frame camera, it's just that. It's 14 millimeters, so that's pretty wide. You can take between maybe 25 and 30 second exposures without seeing star trails. Now on a crop sensor camera, this same lens is more like 22 millimeters, and that only gives you around 18 seconds of exposure time before star trails. And that's a pretty big deal to uh, think about when you're considering a lens. So how do, how do you figure out what a lens is with a crop sensor camera? It's pretty easy. Just take the focal length of the lens and multiply it by 1.6 if you're a Canon user and 1.5 if you use anything other than Canon, like Nikon. So what does that give us? Well, a 24 millimeter on a crop sensor camera would be around 38 millimeters. A 35 would be more like 56. A 135, 216 millimeters. A 250 millimeter refractor telescope would be 400 millimeters. And this 600 millimeter zoom lens is 960 millimeters. Holy shit. What? what? That's insane! Right? That really makes me regret selling my crop sensor camera. Owning a crop sensor makes smaller focal lengths so much more useful in deep sky astrophotography. So don't be afraid of that 250 millimeter uh, telescope. It's actually gonna look pretty nice through a crop sensor. So let's really start breaking it down. Let's get into the first style of astrophotography, which is landscape, which only really requires a camera, lens, and tripod. If you have the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, that is a great lens to start with because 18 millimeters is so wide. But if you really wanna upgrade, there are two lenses that I would recommend. One is the Rokinon 14 millimeter F2.8, and the other is the Rokinon 14 millimeter F1.4. These are both very wide and very fast. They let in a lot of light and give you a lot of exposure time before star trails. So which one is for you? Let's figure that out. If you want a full frame camera like I do, and you go with the 14 millimeter, one problem you're gonna have is distortion around the edges of your photo. You're gonna see the sides kind of bend or distort, and your stars are gonna be streaking and trailing at the edges of your photo. Take a look at this photo that I took a few years ago when I was just starting out. As you can see, the edges look terrible. They're all misshapen. Now, if you connect the same lens, the 14 millimeter F2.8 to a crop sensor camera, it's gonna crop those edges in and you're not gonna see those problems nearly as bad because it's gonna be more like 22 millimeters. and It's just much tighter of a frame. So in my opinion, the 14 millimeter F2.8 by Rokinon is much better for crop sensor cameras. Well, what about the 24 millimeter? That's actually my favorite focal length for shooting landscape astrophotography because I have a full frame camera. It works really, really well. I get about 15 seconds of exposure time. It lets in a lot of light, but on a crop sensor camera, it's more like 38 millimeters. You don't get nearly as much exposure time. So to sum all that up, if you have a crop sensor camera, go with the Rokinon 14 millimeter F2.8. And if you have a full frame, go with 24 millimeter 
f1.4. Another recommendation for landscape astrophotography is a 24 to 70 zoom lens. They're a bit more pricey, but they are very versatile. They're good for travel photography as well, which is why I went that route. So check those out as well. I, I like Tamron, but Sigma, Nikon, and Canon all make their own versions as well. Now let's talk about deep sky astrophotography. This is where you really fall down the endless rabbit hole of really expensive crap. I'm gonna go ahead and say, get a star tracker for this. You can take deep sky without a star tracker, but you'll have to stack hundreds of images. And honestly, raw camera files take up a lot of hard drive space and you really don't wanna do that. So go ahead and get the star tracker. If you're on a budget, I recommend one of these. The Canon EF 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens. Now I stress the EF and not the EFS. EFS is for crop sensor cameras. You don't really want that. You want the full frame EF. That way it works on both full frame cameras and if you put it on a crop sensor, you get that nice zoomed in crop factor. Another lens I recommend if you're on a budget is the Rokinon 135 f.2. That is a great beginner deep sky lens. I don't personally have one, but I've seen great photos and they pair really well with crop sensor cameras. Now, if you do have the money, I highly recommend a small APO refractor telescope. These also pair really well with crop sensor cameras. So you could get something like the Red Cat 51, the Radian Raptor 61, or the Zenith Star 61. The optics are just gonna be better than a camera lens and the focusing is just gonna be so much smoother and easier to do. Now for full frame camera users like myself, it's a little more complicated because if you want a focal range of let's say somewhere between four and 600 millimeters, you're gonna have to get a bigger, heavier telescope and these little star trackers just don't cut it for heavy telescopes. I personally went with the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter zoom lens. It's not the best, but if you stop it down just a little bit, the stars become very sharp and the colors look really nice. Much better than the colors in this 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens. I was able to find mine used, so it wasn't quite as expensive as one of the brand new ones. And one good thing about these lenses is that once you zoom out, you can lock it in and it doesn't change. Your zoom won't slip. So that's a really nice feature. All right guys, that's about all the advice I have for you today. Those Rokinons are quite affordable. You can find them very cheap on eBay, but a quick note about those, they are manual lenses. There's no autofocus, so just keep that in mind. Don't be afraid to use your kit lenses or even your Nifty 50, especially if you have a star tracker. As a matter of fact, my next video is all about the cool stuff you can do with a Nifty 50. This is a $100 lens. So please subscribe and also give me a like. That would be quite nice. And as always, stay spacey and good night. <laughs>